It is finally chilly here in Missouri. I have my window open even though it's cold just because I would rather feel that crisp air and get a warm cup of coffee than be hot, especially coming right off of summer and it being hot in this kitchen all the time. I am really welcoming that. Today I wanna to share with you three fall coffee drinks. For all of these, you can either use strong brewed coffee or an espresso machine. The first one I'm going to make is not a hot drink, so that might surprise you since I just said that I'm cold, but I'm gonna be doing three. I haven't yet had my afternoon coffee today, which I always have a shot of espresso in the morning and then one shot in the afternoon. I divide it up that way so that I have something to look forward to, especially because the afternoon is my work time, and so I really enjoy sitting down to a cup of coffee at the computer or before I make a video. But fall is my favorite time because I usually do something themed in the afternoon. Whereas in the morning, I'll just have you know a plain cup of coffee or espresso shot. In the afternoon, I'm dressing it up with whatever is seasonal and fall is by far my favorite. The first thing I'm going to make is a pumpkin cold foam. This is something that I believe was popularized by Starbucks but it's actually really simple to make at home. Essentially, you're taking cream and frothing it or blending it or even shaking it until it becomes foamy. So for this pumpkin cold foam variety, I'm doing a cup of heavy whipping cream. You don't have to use freshly milked, but if you have it, that's awesome. Two tablespoons of maple syrup, three tablespoons of pumpkin puree, and a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. You're just going to blend it or use a milk frother until it has about doubled in volume. For the coffee component, I wanted this to be a cold brew so that way it could stay cold with the foam. So I made that in my French press by putting the ground coffee into the French press and pouring cold water over it and allowing that to sit overnight. Now after that, I do like to sweeten it with a bit of maple syrup and then add some ice. I've gotten this drink at Starbucks before and was surprised that the coffee underneath the cold foam isn't sweet. I feel like it should be because the cold foam is sweet, but I want it all to be sweet whenever I'm doing this kind of drink. I also added a bit of pumpkin spice on top. I find that what is so fun about coffee drinks like this, whenever you want to go out to a coffee shop like Starbucks or something local, is mostly just the presentation makes the whole experience very exciting. It's almost like a marketing thing to where you feel like you're getting something that you just can't get at home and truly you can get the same taste and so treat yourself to a pretty glass if you have one and some spice on top or whatever you can do to make it have that experience of going to a coffee shop and getting their fall branded marketed products. It's a mess but it's so so good. I'm going to enjoy this before coming back to show you the other two. I wanna take a quick break from these delicious fall espresso and coffee drinks to tell you about today's sponsor, Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online, organic, natural grocery store where you can stock your staples, you can get specialty items. They have their Thrive Market brand, which is like the grocery store brand. I like that one because it's less expensive. And then they also have some of my favorite brands like Jovial, where I get einkorn flour and einkorn pasta and their canned tomato. They have bulk spices like my everything bagel spice and Herbs de Provence. I also pick up the Thrive Market collagen. I've been getting coconut water from there. They also have household goods as well. I encourage you to check it out to see if there are some things that you can't get locally that you've been wanting to add to your kitchen, add to your meals, and see if there is a really good price on there. I love that on the Thrive Market website, you can sort by your dietary preference. So if you are gluten-free, paleo, dairy-free, you can make it to where only those results show so that it's a really easy user experience. I know for me personally, I get a lot of the same things over and over again, so it makes it to where it's a really quick process to shop on there. I don't really have to browse around. Now every once in a while, I want something very specific, like right now, pumpkin spice, canned pumpkin. I'm really thinking about fall stuff, and so I'm checking out the prices there 
on Thrive Market maple syrup vanilla to see if I can do my fall baking more efficiently and less expensive. Thrive Market is membership based so you can go month to month or you can pay for the year all up front which is what I do. That actually saves you money by doing it that way but if you just want to check it out to see what they have to offer. If there's something that you want in your kitchen, you can try it for a month and see if it's going to be of value to you. Thrive Market is offering Farm Hassan Boone viewers a $60 free gift when you join today. You can check that out at thrivemarket.com forward slash Farm Hassan Boone. I will also leave it in the description box below. All right, next I'm gonna be making a hot salted caramel latte. First, I'm gonna start by making my own caramel sauce. Now, of course, you can just buy it store-bought, but what I love about making things like this from scratch is you can use high-quality ingredients. So if there's a raw organic sugar that you love, you can source that. You can do a grass-fed butter. Even if you don't get some of those more quality ingredients, you still can know that there's only a handful of things in there. There's nothing that you can't pronounce. And it's simple and it's cheaper. So I'm starting by adding a quarter cup of water to the saucepan with a cup of sugar. I'm just gonna let this cook until it's bubbly and dissolves before adding the rest of my ingredients. You're just going to keep cooking until all of the sugar dissolves and it turns a deep amber color. Now while you're doing this, do know that a lot of it will clump and it'll stick to the sides. You can just use a spoon to push it back down from the sides, it'll eventually dissolve. So if it starts getting clumpy, just keep cooking it and you will get there. Next, add in six tablespoons of butter and whisk that until it's all incorporated. Then remove it from the heat and add in a half a cup of heavy cream. I'm just gonna use some more cream here from our jar so it's gonna come right off the top. I just wanna whisk this in quickly. It's bubbly and beautiful. Do another quarter cup here. At this point, you can add in a pinch of salt and a bit of vanilla. I'm gonna leave the salt out and just put that into my latte. This will thicken as it sits. So I'm gonna set this aside, make my other latte to show you guys while this gets cool and thick. The next one I'm gonna make is a brown sugar cinnamon latte. So for this one, I'm gonna show you how I froth the milk without having a milk frother or my espresso machine, which is what I normally use, so that if you don't have that, you can still do this. And then the next one, I'm gonna actually just use my espresso machine. So I'm gonna use brewed coffee here and not a milk frother. First, I'm gonna work on the milk portion of this. Now, you can either do cream or milk, whichever you have will work great for this latte. I'm dipping down here into milk slash cream at this point because I've just about used all my cream. I'm gonna do about a half a cup of milk. Then I'm gonna grab my cinnamon. I always smell because I'm afraid somebody's gonna mix my spices up. Yes, this is cinnamon, not cayenne or cumin, which would be disgusting. And do about a half a teaspoon of, actually I'm just gonna do a quarter. A quarter teaspoon of cinnamon here, and this one. And two tablespoons of brown sugar. Something about brown sugar, it's just, I'm gonna do heaping. <laughs> it's just so much more delicious than honey or anything else. It's just good, especially for a cozy drink like this. Then I'm gonna grab my immersion blender, which is my key to a lot of things in my kitchen. I love this thing. I even use it for whenever I'm making my puff pancakes. Instead of whisking it lately, I've just been using this. But I'm just gonna give it a quick blend to froth it up. And you know what, actually, I'm probably gonna put it into a different cup. Now I have this steaming hot because I am a firm believer, even though I think this is technically not right, but I don't care. And coffee needs to be, when it's hot, it needs to be extremely hot. My younger sister told me that that's not how coffee is supposed to be made, but I really don't care. It 
needs to be really hot. So if my coffee gets cold in the morning, I just go back over to my espresso machine and I use the little milk steamer thing and I put my coffee back there in it. So that way it's super hot. It needs to like almost burn your mouth. Then I'm just gonna add a cup of very strong brewed coffee or two shots of espresso. So normally that's what I would do, but I am making this for this channel today and I want some of you to be able to do this even if you don't have an espresso machine. To my mug and then my frothy milk. Oof, so good. And you don't have to have an espresso machine to get a frothy drink like this. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can just use your regular blender. It'll make a bigger mess. What I love about immersion blenders is you can just pop this top off and rinse it. It's very quick and easy. Whereas a blender, you don't have to get the whole thing dirty. But if you're making a smoothie right after, why would a little bit of cream and sugar not be okay to be like little residual in the smoothie? So that's totally fine too. But I'm going to not drink this because <laughs> I already drank my pumpkin cold foam cold brew, uh, half of it, and I really want a couple sips of the next one I'm gonna make you, which is going to be that salted caramel. So I'm just gonna taste it. So good, it needs to be hotter, to be honest. I needed the coffee to be hot, but I still had some cold brew left over, so I used that. But it's very, very good. Again, for a little bit of fancy, get a little cinnamon or pumpkin spice, sprinkle it on top, make it pretty as well. I also do recommend having these clear glass mugs. I will leave links to anything I talked about below, like my immersion blender and these, but these just make it look pretty. You can see that foam line, which really helps the enjoyment experience for it to be pretty. All right, this is the one I'm most excited about today because it is the most delicious. So I'm gonna swap on the uh, double shot. I almost never use this, I always do a single, but for this one, I'm gonna do a double. I always like to pack it down a little bit so it doesn't come out when I pull it out. There we go. Pack it tight. I'm gonna make my two shots. This one doesn't quite fit, but I still love to use it. There we go. Next, I'm gonna do two tablespoons of my homemade caramel. I'm just gonna estimate here, which is what I normally do anyways. I can't wait to use this for other drinks. And then a little bit of salt, because this is salted caramel. You can do this to your taste. I love that salty taste. I'm gonna do about a half a cup of milk and cream mixture here, because again, I'm getting to the end here with my cream, but it'll still be delicious. And then in this method, I just use this little milk steamer thing to make it airy and fluffy and frothy. And this is what I use most of the time instead of the blender and the saucepan. So this heats it up and adds the air and makes it fluffy. I like to move the little steamer thing out a little bit to just add more air to the top. That way it froths up at the top whenever I pour it in. This one is the best, so definitely make some homemade caramel. I will leave all of the recipes down below, so if you miss something and you wanna remake this or keep it in your kitchen, I will make sure to put those down below. Hope that you enjoyed this video and that you will pour yourself something cozy this fall, all season long. It's the perfect way to embrace the season. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe. I make videos on food from scratch, natural living, and our handmade home here in our farmhouse.